time. Hello, I'm Diane. I've been working in the garden. Let's have a look at some of the things that are growing here. See this flower here? It's called a geranium. And this is a holly bush. You have holly at Christmas time. But have a look at this. It's a chrysanthemum plant. I thought it was doing quite well until I saw that chrysanthemum next door. But can you see how much bigger it is than my chrysanthemum? Now I know these plants were planted at exactly the same time as each other. My neighbour must be a very good gardener. I wish I were as good. Somehow it doesn't seem fair because I think I work just as hard. You know, it's like that sometimes. Other people can be better at some things than we are and sometimes that can make you feel a bit cross or jealous even. Maybe that's when you feel like saying, it's not fair. These children have made up their own puppet play called It's Not Fair. It's about Sam the seal and Pebbles the baby. The puppets are on long sticks and the children stand behind a stage to work them. One day, Sam the seal came home from school. Peggy the penguin, Pebbles the baby and Grandpa were very busy. Peggy was feeding Pebbles and Grandpa was cleaning his teeth. Sam was so excited with what he'd done that day, he couldn't wait to tell them. Grandpa, Peggy, guess what? I play games at school today and I went at swimming and diving. I can't talk to you now. I'm cleaning my teeth. I can't talk to you now. I'm feeding baby Pebbles. Yum, yum. I'm hungry too. Can you feed me? You're a big boy now. You can feed yourself. Your dinner's on the table. It's not fair. Next day, the world came to take Sam to his school. I got to go to school, but baby Pebbles can stay here and play with the baby polar bear all day long. Hello, Pebbles. What shall we play today? I shall don't know. What shall we play today? It's not fair. But one day, when the world came to take Sam to school, Pebbles wanted to go as well. Grandpa, Grandpa, can I go to school on the way or...? No, you're too young to go to school. And Pebbles said... That's not fair. Now the whale was very friendly and he liked to play with Sam the seal. Sam, would you like to come and have a ride? Yes, please, but can Pebbles come too? Oh, yes, we'll have to ask Grandpa first. Grandpa, Grandpa! Grandpa. Can we go, go, go on the ride on the way or...? Oh yes, that's a good idea. I'll come too. So Pebbles got on the whale. Sam got on the whale. But when Grandpa tried to get on, the whale said, Oh no, Grandpa, you're too big and you are too heavy for me. You will have to swim beside us. And do you know what Grandpa said? It's not fair. Which bit of the puppet play did you like best? I like the bit at the end where Grandpa said it's not fair. The children not only made up the story themselves, they also made the puppets. They've lent me one. Do you recognise him? It's Sam. And this is what he looks like on the inside. He's made from a plastic bottle and a flower pot, all stuck to a wooden stick. His skin is just a piece of furry fabric and his coat, a bright piece of red felt. Simple. Have you ever felt like Sam or Pebbles? Have you ever wanted something that someone else had? I can remember when I was a little girl feeling really angry with my younger sister, Caroline. That's us in the photo. We often used to wear the same clothes as each other. And one day we were going to see our grandma. We were wearing blue dresses with white spots. I hated mine. 
Anyway, on the way to see Grandma, Caroline was sick all down the front of her dress. And do you know, my mum bought her a new one. I was really cross with her because I didn't get one and hers was so much nicer than mine. I felt really angry. You know, even now somehow it doesn't seem fair. Today's story is about an elephant, Boris. There he is on the cover. He felt things weren't fair when a new kitten arrived. It's called Bad Boris and the New Kitten. Boris was a small elephant. He lived with Maisie and he loved her very much. She loved him too and they were very happy together. Until one day, a little lost kitten wandered through the door. Meow. What a dear little yeah. thing, said Maisie. Hmm. Boris didn't think so. Maisie thought that everything the kitten did was just perfect. How Boris hated that kitten. Soon, Boris had a clever idea. What if he copied the kitten? Maisie would be bound to notice him then. So, when the kitten jumped on Maisie's lap, so did Boris. When the kitten played a tune by running along the piano keys, so did Boris. When the kitten jumped through the cat flap, Boris tried to squeeze himself after her. Maisie was very angry. You silly elephant! Boris felt very sad. Nothing seemed fair. One night, the kitten was out in the garden chasing moths, when suddenly a ferocious dog leapt out of the bushes and he chased the little kitten right out of the garden and up a tree. High up in the tree, the kitten looked down at the street and meowed sadly. But there was no sign of the little house, or of Maisie, or of Boris. When Boris got up next morning, he was delighted to see that the little kitten wasn't on the doorstep waiting for her breakfast. When Maisie saw the little kitten's uneaten breakfast, she began to cry. Where can she be? By the next morning, the kitten still hadn't returned. Oh, Boris, said Maisie sadly. What shall we do without our little kitten? You know how much I love both of you. Boris was astonished. He had no idea that Maisie still loved him. All at once, he didn't feel jealous any more. He looked at the kitten's toys and felt sad. Then he made up his mind. He would find the kitten and bring her back home. He started out into the summer evening. He marched along the street, right past the big dog's house. The dog ran out barking and snapping at his legs. But Boris trumpeted loudly and the big dog ran away. Boris ran from street to street, calling out for the little kitten. But she was nowhere to be found. Just as he was about to give up, his ear began to flap. He could just hear a tiny frightened meow right above him. There was the kitten, shivering at the top of a very tall tree. We want you to come home, said Boris. Boris was too big to chase after balls of wool or to run along piano keys, but he was just the right size for lifting a kitten down from a tree. Boris carried the kitten all the way home. They were both so tired when they arrived that they curled up together on the sofa and fell asleep. You found our kitten, cried Maisie when she saw them together. Isn't he clever, she said to the kitten. And after that, they all lived together happily. Until Maisie won a goldfish at the fair. How do you think Boris and the kitten felt about the goldfish? Do you think Maisie loved them all the same in the end? I'm sure she did. Not only grown-ups write books, though. Children do, too. And Eleanor Kirk and Katie Steele have come to the Storytime Garden to read us their story. Hello there, girls. Come Hello. sit down. Right, Katie, what's the name of your book? 
It's called Harold the Mouse and the Magical Mole. Mm -hmm. And Eleanor, where did you get the idea for the story from? Katie had the idea of making a story about a mouse and we really took it from there. I see. And which one of you did the drawings? Well, Eleanor did some rough drawings at the beginning. And then we read the story. Then Eleanor did the proper drawings afterwards. Right, Eleanor, you've brought along a couple of the proper drawings as yes. cutouts. Tell us who this is. This is Harold the Mouse. Mm -hmm. And this person? This is the magical mole and she gets into all sorts of trouble. And who did you write the story for? We wrote it for the younger children at our school. Well, perhaps you could read it for us now, if you would. Once there lived a short, fat mouse called Harold. Harold loved to eat cheese. He ate big cheeses and little cheeses, fat cheeses and thin cheeses. Every night, Harold would go to a cheese shop to get his cheese. One night, Harold found a baby mole on the cheese shop doorstep. I'd better look after her, thought Harold, and went home with the mole. The next morning, Harold got out of bed and went to his cheese cupboard to get some cheese for his breakfast, only to find that the baby mole had magicked all the cheese into worm burgers, which were her favourite food. Harold began to get very, very angry. I'm jealous of that little mole, he thought. She can do magic and I can't. The next morning, Harold's favourite top hat disappeared. On the floor was a silly hat with a pink ribbon around it and some colourful flowers. Harold was jealous and angry. He had to wear his second best hat. Harold went to see Wizzy the Wizard and asked, Will you teach me some magic, please? I'm getting really annoyed with that little mole. I want to get my own back. After a week, Harold was good at magic. In fact, he was better than the mole. Harold saw a frog sitting on a lily pad. He made the frog grow very big, but it almost ate Harold. I won't try the growing spell again, said Harold. Then the mouse saw a spider. He made its legs get longer, but the spider chased Harold and almost caught him. I won't try the long leg spell again, said Harold. The mole had seen what Harold could do, and she was both jealous and cross because of the mouse's magic. So she went away. When Harold got home, he found that the baby mole had gone. I think I'll stick to cheese, not magic, said Harold, and sat down to eat some cheese. Well, that was lovely, girls. Thank you very much indeed. I thought your drawings were marvellous, Eleanor. Perhaps you can show us how they're done, would you? Yes. How do you start off? First I do the black outline and then I colour it in. Was it difficult to work out how he should look? No, not really. And is it hard to make him look the same every time you draw him? No, because it's a very simple thing to draw. Mm -hmm. He's very good. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.